Hey guys, so what you're looking at right now is a radio telescope. It was built in the 1960s at the Bell Laboratory to look to keep an eye and detect the satellites in orbit and even balloon satellites that were sent. After the job was over, two astronomers took over the telescope to do radio astronomy. Before starting the observation, they wanted to check if the or if the telescope was working fine. So they started taking readings and they found this. Their readings. So they started to find the cause for it. They pointed their telescope to the New York City, that was the New York City, and it was not the source that was causing that hiss. They even looked for other sources, like the pigeon droppings, and even the pigeons that were nested in that uh, in that telescope, they cleaned all that stuff out. They, it was not like it was a constant in a particular time of the day. It was constant throughout the day, even at night, and in all parts of the sky. Wherever they pointed the telescope, the hiss was constant. They knew that this, this signal was not coming from the sun, or from the earth, or even from our galaxy. But they couldn't figure out what caused it. During the same time, Robert Dickey, Jim Pibbles, and David Wilkson were working on the Big Bang Theory at Princeton University. And Robert Dickey suggested that so the temperatures and pressures in the early universe were such that atoms could not exist. Matter was in a highly ionized plasma state. Because of that, photons were trapped in this early universe as the universe expanded and cooled and when the universe was 300,000 years old the temperature and density of the universe dropped dropped at a point where atomic nuclei and electrons were able to combine to form atoms and at this moment the photons that were trapped could now freely travel throughout the universe and the, these photons that escaped at this moment are actually the photons that make up the cosmic microwave background radiation. Back then, the radiation was about 3000 Kelvin. Now, because of the expansion of the universe, it has dropped to 2.7 Kelvin and their wavelengths have stretched in the microwave part of the range. And this is what Dickey predicted. And this is what Penzias and Wilson's telescope was actually receiving. They didn't realize it until a friend of theirs pointed out about this research that Dickey and his colleagues were doing. They contacted Dickey and his colleagues as they were trying to make an experiment that could detect this, telling them that they have already detected it. They together published a paper. Before that, they were unaware that they were actually receiving the echo of the Big Bang itself. This discovery gave us the very first evidence about the Big Bang model. 1978, they received their Nobel Prize for this discovery. And this is how they accidentally discovered the beginning of our own universe. This is Bob Wilson of Bell Laboratories. The noise you're listening to in the left channel is noise from a radio astronomy receiver on the 20 foot line. This is the original instrument with which Arnold Penzias and I discovered the cosmic microwave background radiation in 1965. That is all for today. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel for all the future videos. I make a new video every Thursday. So keep your eye for the new videos. And as always, stay curious, stay awesome.